I hope you guys are ready for this one because I have a lot to talk about. Hello everybody, I am Phoebe and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I'm learning Korean. So the last video was about why I'm learning Korean and now we're going to get into the nitty gritty as to how I'm actually doing it because I am quote unquote self-taught at the moment, which isn't exactly true because obviously I'm using resources people have created. So a lot of people are teaching me, I guess. So let's jump right in. First, we're going to start off with the traditional stuff books and reading. A lot of the materials from this point on you're going to hear about is going to be mainly from Talk To Me in Korean. They, from what I've used so far, are a great, great resource to learn Korean and they break it down in a way that makes it really easy and fun to learn, which is super exciting. So I actually have four books by them at the moment. So the first two are levels, well, the first level of their grammar program or curriculum, and it is their textbook and their workbook. I find using them both together to be really, really helpful. The grammar workbook is just what it sounds like. It's a workbook, and so there's not much explanation into why things are what they are, they're just exercises. And then the textbook is again, just what it sounds like. It explains to you different grammar points and then there's a couple exercises at the end or like one page worth of exercises. And there is also a sample dialogue, both of which come with audio tracks that go with it. So the grammar book has audio tracks that correspond with the words that are being highlighted or whatever grammar point it is so you can hear it as well as the um, sample dialogue. And then in the grammar workbook, there are some sections where you are doing some dictation. So you're actually listening and writing down what you hear. So you have audio parts that go with that, which is also super helpful because they say it at fairly normal speed and then they do it slower. So you kind of get used to how things sound naturally. The other two books that I have are supplemental kind of workbook things. The first one that I have is called My First 500 Korean Words. So I really like this one. I'm actually just now jumping into that one. And what's cool about it is at the beginning, it has a fairly simple breakdown of some of the grammar points that are going to be explained in the remainder of the book. So for the next 50 days, it's broken down to 50 days. So you learn 10 words a day. There's actually more than 10 words per day because it's actually broken down into stories and then they have the main words that they want to highlight for you to remember but then they also break down other supplementary vocabulary that just kind of corresponds with what you're being taught anyway so either that being antonyms or similar phrases that are typically used with that word the next one is real life korean conversations for beginners and that's also a really good book because it breaks it down into categories and so you have introductions you have basic conversations that you might have with friends with family at the grocery store transportation things like that and so it's cool to hear actual phrases that are used commonly and you know the way that they are delivered so that's also super helpful it comes with little pictures which is cute oh also both of the these two books that i just mentioned previously so the 500 words and this one they come with exercises as well um Again, it's not as extensive as like a workbook, but it's still very helpful because you're practicing writing and all that stuff. So these are what I use every now and again when I just want to practice my reading, want to think of like, oh, how do, how do you say, you know, how are you or something like that. I look in that book first before I scour the internet because there's so many different ways of saying stuff in Korean that I'm trying to learn like one way at a time and it has been really helpful for me so far. And then also to read more, I followed a few Instagram accounts that are either from artists or from random hashtags that I found um, of people learning Korean or who already know Korean and are posting things so I can practice reading and then I can kind of see the context by the picture. I'm like, oh, they're probably talking about this. You know what I mean? Before I click the translate because Translate's kind of awkward sometimes. I've, I've clicked on translate. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. So I don't think this is what they're saying. Um, so yeah. Next category is audio slash listening. Obviously for a language, you need to listen to know what it sounds like <laughs> naturally. Um, at least I hope you're doing that if you're learning any kind of language. You probably should. If you're not around all the time, like I'm not actually around people speaking Korean. So I have to force myself to listen to many different resources. So 
The ones that I've been using so far is the Talk To Me In Korean Grammar One podcast lessons. So I usually listen to those multiple times before I even touch the textbook because the textbook just helps me reinforce what I just heard. And then I follow up with the grammar workbook. So I listen to that a lot, typically when I'm driving because I don't really like to listen to podcasts or audiobooks or anything like that if I'm just sitting around at home. But the next one that I have is for also from Talk To Me In Korean and that is the Listen and Repeat Korean Verb Guide. So what they do is they take 100 Korean words and or verbs rather and they break it down into the dictionary form present tense past tense and future tense and then they have sample sentences with each of those conjugations so you just listen to that and you repeat that i haven't done the repeating part really except for mouthing it because i've been listening to it in the background doing other work so um i can't really do that but that's also still been helpful hearing it over and over again the next resource is K word showdown. So basically talk to me in Korean. What they do is they take two similar phrases and then they break it down into why or how they're used in slightly different ways, even though they might be translated into English to the same thing, but they're not necessarily used in the same situation all the time. So that's also good to know, you know, the nuances of a language. So I find that very helpful. The next one is Yagi, and that is slower conversations, like natural conversations. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't even touched that yet, but it's something that I have, and that one's also for beginners, so they're, again, very basic much slower i'm sure than the intermediate one so that is on the back burner for me but i like to have that i also listen to music every day <laughs> um korean music i'm not gonna lie it's the same songs pretty much over and over and over again and it's might sound kind of boring but what's actually been helpful is the fact that i've listened to them so many times when i hear a word a lot of the times especially when i learn a new word i'm sorry i all, like all of a sudden the lyric pops in my head. I'm like, oh, I've heard it here, you know? So I kind of like, I don't know, it sticks better because I've heard it in some place else before. I hope that made sense. <laughs> so yeah, I listen to music all the time, the same playlist, the same songs. Um, and every now and again, I branch out into other songs too, but I found what I like for now. And so I've just been listening to that over and over again. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is videos, woo! So can you guess where I got some of these videos from already? Yes, talk to me in Korean. So I got a couple of their other video courses. So the first one that I actually properly studied was how to read and write in Hangul or Korean, their writing and reading system and their lettering system. And that was super helpful because obviously it is nowhere near the same thing as English. So I studied that properly before I even really wanted to focus on grammar or anything like that. So that I used, highly recommend because it was super helpful for me. The next video series is how Korean sentences work. And that one has been super helpful. It is just reinforcing a lot of the grammar points that I've learned. And then in some of the videos, which I've previewed already, cover some things that I haven't learned yet but I'm not necessarily waiting for that to come up in their traditional grammar level lessons. I'm just kind of watching it when I feel like it to just to break everything up. So it's been really helpful to reinforce some stuff and also to visually see it when he's like circling things and everything like that versus just listening to it via audio and then looking at it in a textbook. It's good to see where he's pointing it out. The next video series is listening practice in slow Korean. So with this one, you have a video of someone telling a story, like a really short story. What it does, it breaks down the first video that you watch is just the story in Korean, no subtitles, you're just listening. The next one, one of their teachers, so in this case, the one that I watched was Hyanu, like he went through sentence by sentence of the video, why things were the way they were. Again, super helpful because A, I'm learning different words and B, they're a lot longer form sentences because right now in the level that I'm at, it's very short kindergarten like sentences <laughs> that I'm dealing with. So it's good to switch things up and then you listen to it again, but this time, or watch it, watch slash listen. It has subtitles as well. The next one is common mistakes Korean learners make and how to fix them with Go Billy Korean. So this was a collaboration video series that they did. And I have listened to a few of them and they're helpful because now I know when I hear certain things, I'm like, oh, that's probably not correct. Or not so much that I've done them yet because I haven't spoken enough or learned far enough on my own that I think that I'm making these mistakes, but it's good to know so I can just avoid them. It's like, oh, 
should do that. All right, moving on. So that kind of thing. So that's been helpful. And they have quite a few videos in there and they're all about like four or five minutes. So they're little bite-sized things that I can like, you know, watch on my lunch break and stuff. Next, we're gonna go into the realm of YouTube. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos now. It's funny because my homepage is almost full of just Korean type videos, <laughs> Korean related videos, um, all that kind of stuff, which I don't mind. So it kind of just, Piques my curiosity and I click a whole bunch of different things. So Talk To Me In Korean also has a ton of free videos that they have on their YouTube channel, which every now and again I watch. Um, they ask answer questions that people have asked, on, asked them on Twitter or in the comments of their videos and stuff like that. And then they have other random videos that are super helpful. There's a couple other channels that I use as well that I will be getting into in a further video or later video that is specifically just like YouTube videos that I watch to learn. So there's that. There are also a handful of vlogs that I've been watching and what's cool about them, they put a lot of effort into these things because embedded in the video, they have the English subtitles of what they're saying and the Korean subtitles of what they're saying. So you see both on the screen at the same time, which has been helpful. Also on YouTube, I've been watching like variety shows and stuff and what they do is put words on the screen all the time. Like that's just the style that they do. And then I've just been finding ones that have subtitles on it because that's been helpful. I'm not at the point where I watch videos that I haven't watched before without subtitles. And lastly, let's go to Netflix. I have so far watched three dramas in Korean and I'm not done with one of them. I'm in the middle of one. And I'll get into those later on in another video as well and tell you how I think about them. Woo! We are almost at the home stretch, guys. So now we're gonna talk about writing, which I think is also super important because when you write things out, it definitely helps you remember. Trust me, it works. So what I do is every single day, I'm not even sure when this started. I wanna say this started at the beginning of this month or something. Every single day, at some point, usually it's before bed, I find a word or a sentence that I wanna memorize. I've kind of moved on to sentences at this point, but I find a word or a sentence that I want to memorize and I write it down on a sheet of paper, front and back. And usually, because I'm still getting used to the writing system, it takes me about a half an hour. I'm not gonna lie, because I A, I don't rush it, because I want to have semi-nice handwriting, so I'm not trying to get in the habit of doing sloppy handwriting. Also, when I'm writing, I'm repeating the word out loud over and over and over again as I'm writing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I kind of do that back and forth and multiple times on the page. So it's not even like one column, if that makes sense. Sometimes it's gone up to, if it's just a word, gone up to six columns front and back of the same word over and over and over again. Again, with the spacing in between, just so that visually it doesn't look sloppy. So yes, I've been doing that a ton. And I'm not gonna lie, there are days where afterwards my wrist and my hand is sore. Ugh. But you know, that's the price you gotta pay to make it stick in here. But it's been super, super helpful. So I cannot, like, not suggest it enough. I hope that sentence made actual sense. Speaking, that is the end goal, right? To be able to speak the language, at least for me, the end goal is to be able to actually speak Korean. That'd be really nice. So what I do is I basically just repeat words that I hear, whether it, from, whether it be from the audios that I have been listening to that are more educational based or words that I've heard in a song or words that I've heard on a video or what have you, wherever I hear it, I try to repeat it especially if they're words that I'm currently learning. Then I also talk to myself randomly throughout the day in Korean when I can, when it's not super awkward. <laughs> you know, if I'm like by myself or whatever, and I'm like, oh, what's this? I would say it. So it'd be like, oh, ego moyo. Like, what is this? You know, if I'm walking around or where is it? So it'd be like, oh, like where, what am I looking for? I might not know the word for whatever I'm looking for, but at least I'm trying to say, the like phrase enough so it's kind of sticking so hopefully it'll naturally come out if once i'm not going to say if but once i get to the point where i can speak to other people another thing with speaking i randomly tell people the words that i'm using or that i've learned if i find a word that, 
that sounds really cute, I will share it. Like for example, one day I was like, oh my gosh, mom, like listen to the word that I learned. So the word at the time was chigum. So like, I probably <laughs> emphasize that a little bit weird, but basically it just means now. And I just thought it's the cutest sounding word, like chigum. I don't know why, I just really like that word. Or what other word? So for example, me and one of my really close friends are nickname for each other is just friend. So we just call each other friend <laughs> at the office and everything like that. So now I've started to um, call her Chingu. So she calls me Chingu as well. So it's been fun doing that kind of thing. So just randomly telling people that I know that I know I'm not annoying. <laughs> Random words that I'm using, that I'm learning at the time or the words that I find hard. So I try to say it. I'm trying to think of a word or a phrase that is kind of difficult for me at the moment. Um, well, I can share this new word with you. So it is batong. Um, so that is sounds really awkward to me. I don't know why. I might not actually sound awkward, but batong. So that just means usual or usually or regular. <laughs> so there you go. That's a word for the day, I guess. Moving on to the very last thing that I have to share with you, or the category rather, is thinking. Okay, so I already told you that I talked to myself randomly in Korean now. I've been trying to do my best to, at the very least, think when I can in Korean. Obviously, I'm going to naturally think in English, but now what I've been doing is if I know that I have already learned a phrase, I will repeat it again in Korean in my head. And the purpose for that is, again, kind of like talking to myself, is to start being able to get my mind in a place where I can quickly switch back and forth because it's always awkward because that was my problem with Spanish. So I know a little bit of Spanish um, because my dad speaks Spanish and my problem is I could understand a lot, but I cannot speak it well, which is really frustrating. Eventually I'll dabble in Spanish again, but I'm really excited about Korean. So that's why I'm like focusing on this one. But that was my issue is not being able to switch into Spanish very easily. Like in the end, people were like, oh, well, it's this word means this. I'm like, oh, well, dang, yes, of course I know that. But for some reason, the lanes between English to Spanish has been like blocked where Spanish to English, it just flows way, way, way easier. So I'm trying to circumvent that issue by thinking in Korean as much as I can. The overarching theme for all of this and I want you guys to remember if you're trying to learn any language or Korean or whatever it is, actually learn anything. Let's just be real, learn anything. Practice, repeat, 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 repeat. Like it's like a daily cycle. Even when I don't want to study at this point, most days I do, but yesterday, for example, for some reason I just wasn't into it, but I forced myself. I sat down and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do it. Do it for a little bit. I'm just gonna read the words. Okay, I'm in the middle of reading the words. Might as well just write the words. So I'm just gonna write the words. So it kind of gets a snowball effect, but then at the end of the day, I got to go to my mom and be like, hey, look, I learned these like random 10 words. Um, and that was almost, I don't know, reward in itself. Cause now I'm like, actually I did learn these words. So this is really cool. Cause right now I'm at a point where grammatically, I feel like I'm in a good place, right? Um, a lot of the basic structure and stuff is not all that awkward to me. There's plenty of things I still need to learn, but the base is there. Now what I need to do is build up a lot of vocabulary words. So that is where my focus is going to be from now on. Well, not my only focus, but I'm definitely going to make that a, a priority as well. Cause before it was just like, nope, I'm just going to deal with grammar because you know, that's how you make a sentence. So it doesn't matter if I know words, if I don't know the grammar structure, it's not gonna help me. So now I'm at a place where I feel good about it, that I can continually grow that. And then now I just need to have a good vocabulary bank. So that is it for today. I hope that was interesting uh, and it wasn't too boring for you, but it's a lot. It doesn't feel like a lot actually when I do it throughout the day, but when I break it down, I felt like I had a lot to talk about. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And if you are learning Korean or any kind of language, please let me know how you're doing it too. Because again, I'm curious, are you using the same things I am? Are you using the same methods? Are there any cool methods that I don't know about that could help me being a little selfish there? But in the comments, that can help other people too. So yeah. Okay, so official goodbyes. I will see you later. 
안녕히 계세요. Bye.